<laughs> Fortunately, to cover all the events, we had the services of a roving ambassador and good friend, Miss Betty Davis. And she went with the All in the Family family from the Senate to the Smithsonian to the White House to meet President Jimmy Carter. And I again thank you, Dinah, so much that you couldn't come. I've never had a better day. She was thanking me for not coming to Washington. Well, Betty, I wish I could have been there. Now it's time for us to meet two really extraordinary people and two extraordinary actors. They have affected our lives to such a degree that it's hard to believe that Archie and Edith Bunker are also Carol O'Connor and Jean Stapleton. <laughs> If you've just tuned into the show, you missed one of the most exciting moments for me we ever had on a television show. Carol and Jean walked out, and our audience spontaneously stood up and gave them a standing ovation. And, and of course, it's much deserved, but it doesn't always happen in a television studio. And for a show that was supposed to be a 13-week gig, that's kind of exciting, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, sure. I love people who stand up for me. Seven years you've been doing the show, and it has never palled. I'm sure you don't get tired of it. Well, out, out of that past seven years. But this is the ninth season. Ninth. Yeah. Oh, ninth. the ninth. Then We're you've been doing it eight yes, years. Yes. Oh, you're going. I, to I think it's. Really I, seven I, and I, and I think. It, I, I think it's eight. Eight and a half. I think it's eight, eight, eight calendar years, but it's nine yeah. seasons. I think. Nine yes, seasons. Mm -hmm. Eight calendar years. Out of that. Yeah, your research failed you again. I don't know. Oh, I just. You know, I just don't do my homework. But out of that length of time. One of your favorite episodes? The one where where Rob and I got got locked in the storeroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. And I tell you why I, that I don't say it was my favorite, but I liked it because it was, it was the first time in all the years that we sort of revealed something about uh, about Archie's uh, childhood, mm. the uh, origin, you know, the the sort of the genesis of some of his misconceptions sure. came out during that that mm -hmm. show. Yeah. And uh, so I liked it. I liked it for that reason. Yeah. I don't know if it was the best work I've ever done, but I liked oh, the show. Oh, I love that one. And the one with your brother, when your brother, your long lost brother came oh, in. Oh, yeah. No. <gasps> began to know so much about Archie yeah. and the brother and the relationship. Mm. Gee, that Now, look at the monitor. I look so old. No, you look handsome. What are you talking about? You good looking devil. It's the way you've got your position. You're in the king's chair. Ah, oh, vanity thy name yeah. is man, eh? Oh, good, I'm glad. God, we worry about ourselves far more than the women boys. I, we do. I do. I thought, I, I, thought I, I thought you were flawless, and now I have found a tiny, and I'm delighted. You're human like the so rest vain, of us. So vain, eh? Oh, good, I'm so glad. Because I haven't checked to see how I look yet. Oh, oh there, see? Oh, yeah, yeah. oh well. No worries. We have a, a scene from Washington with you talking, you and Sally both talking with uh, Betty Davis. 
<laughs> Have you any special favorite? Yes, I well, I always liked the ones where uh, uh, there were two people, two characters interacting and relating. So I think my favorites was one in which Archie and Edith were left alone in the house. I think they called that it the empty nest. Beautiful. Thank you. And then I loved the one where uh, Archie and Edith celebrated their 25th yes. wedding anniversary yes. and yes. went back oh, to Atlantic yeah, City. Yes. Uh, but you know, I loved so many more. Oh, I and know. I loved every time <laughs> that, that uh, less, of course, often, uh, uh, Gloria and uh, Edith uh, had uh, a really deep um, moments, oh, you know, oh, such as uh, the the uh, episode in which Gloria um, taught Edith <laughs> a little a bit about the facts of life. I think she taught her about <laughs> menopause. Menopause, yes. menopause. And then another one I loved was oh. was uh, her wedding. Yes, that's what night. I want to say. The wedding yes. when when you uh, we had to have our a mother daughter talk. It was a convention we must go through, and Edith uh, had nothing to say. <laughs> She did. Uh, Gloria let, said she everything. She let Edith off the hook, you know. But you see, daughters become our mothers. Yes. It's a natural evolution. Yes. My oldest daughter is now my mother. Yes. And infinitely brighter, I must say. Yes. <laughs> now, Sally, what was your favorite episode? Dramatically, I would say Edith's 50th birthday, which we just did last year, uh, and on that occasion, a man broke into the, uh, came into the home and attempted rape on Edith, and it was a two-part oh, show and very dramatic. And at the end of the second part, I got to do a wonderful scene trying to talk Edith into telling the police she had to to do that. It was her duty to herself and all women. Mm -hmm. And she stood up and slapped me. And when she slapped me, the entire studio audience went, ah! 300 people breathing in creates a vacuum. I nearly moved off the set with that. It was marvelous. And comedically, I think the most fun I had was with Rob Reiner when we did a show last year, and I can't remember the title of it, but it was a flashback to Mike and Gloria's first, first date. date. Mm -hmm. Yes, I saw that. And wrong. he got to put on a beard and a tie-dye t-shirt yes, and Levi's wrong. and come in and spout the, the, uh, the politics of the 60s. It and I great. got to put on the old wig yes, and the mini yes. dress, mm -hmm. and we had a ball. And we had the eight years that we'd done the show, we had all that back material to make any line we said work. For instance, I told the character, Mike, I like ballroom dancing, and he said, so do I. He said, but girls your age don't know, where did you learn it? And Gloria said, well, my father taught me how to ballroom dance. And Mike said, well, he sounds like a wonderful man. And I go, oh, yes, you'd love him. Well, the audience <laughs> broke up laughing, and that's yes, because we had eight years, years of backstory to know that they don't love each oh, other. Oh, <laughs> of theirs that I absolutely do. I could, I could mm. talk forever about, mm. every, I think every one of us has lived every single episode. We'll be right back and talk about a lot more of them. Right after this. Coming up, Gene, Sally, Rob, and Betty Davis in Washington. I'm here with the beautiful Carol O'Connor and the beautiful Jean Stapleton and we're talking about glorious day in Washington when the chairs that Edith and Archie sat in were ensconced in the Smithsonian Institute but how did you feel being interviewed by Betty Davis oh well I was thrilled I, I thought you know <laughs> I've come to this you know I never dreamed in my wildest that I'd even meet her <laughs> much less be interviewed by her and find that she's a very very candid um outgoing uh character she's wonderful she is a character she, she, she and she's she's very strong in her convictions and so it was very interesting and i love her candor love I, it. I, I do too she said one day I love, uh, on the show we, we we did a whole show together and she sang uh i wish you bluebirds in the spring a, a, a storm yeah. a cozy fire to keep you warm and she lip synced to this recording of hers mm -hmm. and she said that her uh, she's going to make sure that's played at her funeral because her children know that's her favorite song and then they'll cry oh. like this. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. When do you feel 
that you could or would or have broken the Archie mold. I mean, you've played other things. I've seen. Uh, I, re I don't re really worry about it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the press has, has kept up this running thing over the years, and I'm constantly trying to get away from, uh, from Archie because of, to them it makes a good story. They're such dumbbells, the press. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see now, but, there's producers oh, in the press, right? That's yeah. right. But I've, I've, never, I've never tried to get away from the role of Archie because it's, it's, I don't think I'll ever play a better role as long as I live. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I play good roles, I hope, but you know, the, the audience, if, if I played Henry VIII or something like that, you know, somebody wanted me to play oh. Churchill. Oh, you know? oh marvelous. Well, I, they'd accept me. Of course say. they would. You did, you did Julius some, Caesar? Some dumbbell might yell out, hey, Arch, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> The last two raw, I cried my eyes. I thought, loved it. That was absolutely great. Well, sure, audiences know I'm an actor playing a role, and they'll accept me in another role as long as I'm good. You see. Exactly. But the, the powers that be always say, oh, you can't cast her. Or oh, Betty Davis is too well known. You can't cast her as a landlady or something, okay. you know. That they do know. Because they know she's such a grand lady. Yeah. But you can. Sure you can. You're sure you can. Interesting, um, because uh, there was a, a conversation between Peter Ustinov, David Niven, on one of the talk shows in the morning. I believe it was David Hartman they were talking to him. And Ustinov was saying that he'd been a nervous wreck because they'd switched a scene around in Death on the Nile. And they said, oh, it's the scene with Betty Davis. And I, oh, she's such a pro and I don't know the line. So all night long, Peter Ustinov stood up and walked back and forth in the room and learned his lines. David Niven came on the set the next morning, ashen. And uh, so did Peter Ustinov. And he said, tough scene, old boy. And he said, yes, very tough. He said, I hope I know my lines because you know Betty Davis is very tough. She came on the set and after about 30 seconds, she said, well, we can't possibly do it that way. Well, they both were stricken because they said, she said, I don't know the lines <laughs> all night long. I've been up walking back and forth knowing I was going to have to do the scene with you too. Uh, and I was a basket case. Well, <laughs> pro is a pro is a pro. Smithsonian, yeah. where the chairs of Archie and Edith are residing for all the world to see their Sally Struthers and Norman Lear in the background. And we have uh, uh, Rob Reiner's response to uh, one of the events that yeah. happened when they were... I, uh, I, I spent eight years getting thrown out of that chair, so uh, <laughs> now he can't do that anymore. It's there in that uh, little glass box. Oh, it's, it's exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah. You close to the dream, so they get you all in the shop there. We have a, uh, another response, Norman Lear's a very warm, revealing statement about what those chairs meant to him. Did you know about this? And you have it makes me feel terrific. And my father, who's been oh. gone for about 17 years, if he's watching, should feel terrific too, because he always had a territorial imperative about his chair. His chair was his place, and nobody else could sit in it. He came Archie's, and so in a sense, symbolically to me, it's his sitting back there too. She said something I, very nice. Did she really? I don't know if we Shall have I that. I, I just, uh, yeah. Well, Sally uh, made a remark. She said, uh, I'm not represented there, um, really. But she said, uh, we spent a lot of time acting in the space behind and around those yeah. chairs. So I feel that space yeah. <laughs> is ours. So. Yeah, well, Norman told me to do that. I, in the, it must have been the second or third show. And... Uh, he, he told me to uh, keep people out of that chair, and I thought that was a marvelous character uh, thing. I, he, of course, as he said here, he got that right from his own father. Sure. So I used that with, uh, with great pleasure and kept everybody out of the chair, except, uh, except uh, Sally, mm -hmm. yeah. the Gloria role, and Danielle. And Danielle, who's... Mm -hmm. Gonna get yeah, to sit yeah, in that he, chair every yeah, once yeah. He doesn't chase her out of it. No. no. But I miss everybody else out. I miss the television set sitting right in front where he watches the Three Stooges. His idol. <laughs> you know. Well, uh, we, 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 we have it, but we shoot inside it. I bet people wonder what we're using for chairs this season. I was just going to ask, well, what's going to replace the chair? All right. Well, reproductions were made. <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, of these chairs and, and very exact ones, almost. Now, wouldn't exact. you say it was a high time? Oh yes, I mean I saw them there in Washington, and believe me, they they couldn't stand 
<laughs> another, another uh, tortoise, tortoise yes. <laughs> on them. And you he, know, my husband said, he, he looked at my chair there and he said, I always knew Jean's tushy would be celebrated somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> We have a, another little uh, episode here that happened with our ambassadress uh, without portfolio, or with portfolio, Betty Davis, when she was talking to Sally, and with you, Jean. Uh, for the first time in the history of, of the Smithsonian, a comedy TV series is to be represented in the museum's theater collection. Tonight, with much of official Washington looking on, they are formally presenting Archie's beloved wing chair and Edith's smaller, straight-backed armchair for permanent display. I don't know exactly what period you'd call the bunk of furniture. <laughs> <laughs> I've, always, I've always thought of it as early matrimonial. Oh. <laughs> yes. But before we go any further, I want the Smithsonian officials to know that I also have something to offer. Perhaps for their Department of Antiquities. <laughs> I would like to donate myself as the oldest working actress in Hollywood. Jean, <laughs> you have worked this series for eight years. In what way have those years changed you? Well, I think they've enriched me beyond measure uh, as an actress. They've uh, caused me to grow as an actress. They have caused me to, having uh, passed through what I call the, uh, the finest university or college of comedy that anyone could, and uh, caused me, therefore, to uh, know a lot more about that subject of comedy and about uh, playwriting in general, because we all uh, tackle each week with a great deal of uh, care and analysis. And uh, it's, I think, also because of the social statement that each, almost every show makes, has uh, awakened my own uh, social conscience and uh, developed it so that I've become somewhat of an activist, whereas Prior to yes. this show, I was not. But I think that I, I think that this series served that purpose for many people, many people watching, mm -hmm. and, and I, I hope that many of the real Archie Bunkers maybe change their mind we after listening so. to Archie. <laughs> I hope so. Yes. Sally, yes. I know that both you and Rob feel you've made the right decisions in leaving the series now to go on to other things. But looking back, being cast as Gloria was certainly the big break for you? Yes. Well, there'll never be another break like that, ever. I get my own series next year on CBS, and at best, I can hope for something that will run anywhere from uh, one show to, to three or four years, but it will never be an experience like this. When I, when I got the part of Gloria, I went in and read for Norman Lear, and I had laryngitis, bad laryngitis. And he had seen a oh, couple hundred girls for the part of Gloria. And he handed me a scene to do, a yelling scene. And I had to do this screaming scene with no voice. Well, I guess Norman thought that was so funny with me yelling like this <laughs> that he let me come back and do um, a second interview. And it was on that second interview that I got to um, do some improvisations with Rob Reiner. And I was so convinced when I went back on that second interview that I didn't have the part that I was relaxed and of free course. to create. <laughs> and Rob, who was in a, a theater group that did that on stage every week, was brilliant at it. And so I just sort of followed him, and it went very well. But when I got the job, I was sure it would be a 13-week job. I had just finished being on the Tim Conway Comedy Hour, and that lasted 13 weeks. And before that, I was on the Smothers Brothers show, and that lasted eight weeks. So the longest I'd ever worked on anything was 13 weeks. So I thought, well, this is a nice job for 13 weeks. I like this. And then eight years later, here you here are. I am. Being honored. Yes. Can't Imagine. believe it. 
It must be just like a imagine. dream to all your cats. It is. It is. Uh, as Sally incredible. said before, it it's just doesn't seem real. It doesn't seem but, real. Yes. But, it, 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 but I turned real. to you, Betty, <laughs> and I said, why? Mm -hmm. When this, Mr. Ripley, the secretary of the Smithsonian, was making the presentation of the chairs, uh, I turned to you and I said, why? I just don't understand why this is happening. And you said something wonderful back to me. Do you remember what you said? You said, because you said something every, every week. Every show, it said something. And I think that's what the medium of, of the screen, television and movies are really getting to be more and more the same. Mm -hmm. That is the point. I don't care how little, let's say something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boy, I'd like to think of something significant right now. <laughs> say something weighty right mm -hmm. now something of real significance besides we'll be right back i mean just <laughs> And the whole cast, including Judy, came to the wedding. Aww. It was on a, a, um, a Saturday morning. The rest of the cast went back to do their Saturday matinee, including my understudy. And we went off for our week's honeymoon. Oh, <laughs> oh that's lovely. Mm. Did you, were you very fond of Judy? Oh, very, very. Uh, she was a big influence uh, uh, on my uh, career, mm -hmm. I believe, because uh, she was such a consummate actress. I think I remember her most because she would not settle for mediocrity. Oh. She insisted on more. You, you going to do a song from Bells Are Ringing? No. This song has never been done before oh. on television or, uh, to my knowledge, anywhere else. It was written, the music was written by Jerry Mulligan, the famous jazz saxophonist. Who was married to Judy. Yes. And uh, the... Um, the lyrics were written by Judy. And they wrote this song and several others for a musical, which was never produced, uh, based on the Anita Luce play, Happy Birthday. And you're going to do that one for us now. What's it called? It's called Something Lovely. Something Lovely. Mm -hmm. Gene Stapleton, singing so Jerry Mulligan, mm -hmm. Something Lovely. Jerry Mulligan and Judy Oliver.
Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's Danielle, you just keep right ahead eating. Cause I, I, it's I, I known as seeing for your supper. I know. That's right. Good thing you didn't have coconut before you said. Oh, let yes. Me let me tell you. Yes. I, I, you know that I, what good. I haven't found out about? A raw... <laughs> I have enjoyed today. I can't tell you how much. Carol, mm -hmm. you know how much I love you. And I think... No, I hope so. Oh, but everybody, get, every time you come on the show, every time I spend any time with you, I get to know you better. And this, you're infinite. You're just a bottomless pit of wonderful things. Thank oh, you. Oh, my. You really Thank are. you, Don. You no, I'm not. You, mm -hmm. she, you're wise, you're dear, and I can't thank you enough. You're a consummate actress, consummate human being. Thank you. And I thank you for sharing so much of it with me. Thank you for having us. Danielle, it was lovely to meet you. And I want to thank Rod, and I want to thank Sally, and I want to thank Norman Lear, and our roving ambassadress of words, Miss mm. Betty Davis, for helping us out in Washington. What a treat. And since you were so great, gave us a standing ovation. Let's give them a standing ovation. What a don't miss the 33rd annual day of nostalgia at yankee stadium with a salute to five decades of champions see joe dimaggio yogi berra mickey mantle whitey ford and more in a special two-inning game prior to the yanks a's action tomorrow at 1 15 on 11.